This week I'm here in South Lake Tahoe for a little end of summer vacay. And while there are a ton of outdoor activities to do for weeks, the food scene here is still relatively up and coming. Usually when I'm here, I either eat fast at the ski resort or I cook food in my condo. But this week I thought I'd really challenge myself and eat local. So come along with me and we'll scope out the best that South Lake Tahoe has to offer. For those that are not familiar with Lake Tahoe, it's a very popular resort area about a three to four hour drive northeast of San Francisco. And it's got a huge outdoor rec area and is super popular as a weekend getaway from the Bay Area. South Lake Tahoe is the biggest city as well as resort area in the whole of Lake Tahoe. And it's located in, well, the South Shore. And I like it best because it's the most developed and has the most in terms of activities and food. In the past, I found food quality to be only so-so, but in recent years, more and more chefs have been opening quality restaurants in the area, and so today's food tour should be quite promising. So sleepy. We need to start the day with a little sugar. I love donuts, but the Bay Area doesn't really do it for cool and funky flavors. So I was totally psyched to discover glazed and confused donuts here in Tahoe. It's a play on the famous Matthew McConaughey movie, Dazed and Confused, and the flavors here are equally as psychedelic. So I'm here with the owner, Mara, who co-owns Glazed and Confused with her husband. Hi, Mara. Hi. Thanks for having us today. Thank you for coming in. Uh, we actually started off as a donut delivery company. Me and my husband met here uh, 15 years ago. Hi there. He had an aptitude test when he was, I think he was in third grade, and it said he should be a donut chef and he just won Best Chef of South Lake Tahoe. We have about 70 donuts on our menu. We rotate them out daily. There's some that you'll find every single day here, which would be Floyd, who's my son. He's actually tattooed on my arm. Floyd is a strawberry-based donut. He has an airhead candy uh, sour tongue and candied eyeball. It started off as a joke between me and my husband. Um, I just wanted to get out of the kitchen, and so I told him I was gonna make a donut that we had to go take around town. Our first picture was actually the Welcome to Lake Tahoe signs, so we hiked up there, used Floyd as the O of Tahoe. He has his own Instagram, his own Facebook. People take him around the world. He actually just went to Germany. He went to Russia. He was just ice fishing in Alaska. He goes everywhere, so I get to vicariously live through him. You know, we just try to keep everything fun. We want to make everyone smile. If I can get one smile out of somebody every day, that's all that counts. This is our ET phone home. Maple donut dipped in Reese's. This is our freak show. It's a vanilla donut with animal cookies on top. Our cookie monster, which is a vanilla donut with cookies on top. Our Samoa, like the Girl Scout cookie. Roasted coconut and walnut. And then that is our Lucky Charms. Strawberry donut. They all look delicious. They're amazing. So today I got two donuts. The first one on recommendation from the shop is that don't lay a finger on my butterfinger. It's a raised donut that's glazed with chocolate, sprinkled with crumbled butterfingers, and it looks like here's some drizzles of caramel. Looks delicious. Mmm. The donut itself is really light and fluffy. And there's just enough of a chocolate layer on top to give it a little bit of the chocolate taste but not overwhelm the taste buds. And those butter fingers just give it a slight pop of peanut butter. Like once in a while in the mornings, my husband will make a peanut butter and Nutella toast. This is kind of what it tastes like. And I also got the blueberry lemonade filled donut, which is a raised donut that's filled with a delicious looking lemonade custard. And on the outside, there's an icing with little bits of fresh blueberries. Look at that. Oh, yum. The custard has this really nice tanginess to it. And there's kind of this really nice hint of blueberry on the outside. This is definitely a summer donut. When you eat it, you kind of get this feeling of sitting on your back porch with a blueberry lemonade in your hand. 
This is also perfect for you traditionalists who want to take a little bit of a walk on the edge but don't want to go all the way onto the dark side. And of course, you got to get a cup of coffee with your donuts. And here, they fresh brew Alpine Sierra coffee. Wonderful taste of Tahoe. All right, guys, I'm all sugared up for my hike. A friend recommended Artemis Cafe for some awesome casual Mediterranean food for lunch. There are two locations. The original restaurant, which is located in a strip mall on the way to Emerald Bay, and this location in Marina Ski Run in the center of town. This is the location you should go to for fabulous lakeside dining. You could gaze out over the marina at the speedboats and jet skis going by. Mostly what's on the menu are Greek and Greek-inspired items like gyros, falafels, and spanakopita. Breakfast is their most popular meal here, and the crab cake eggs benedict, as well as the baklava French toast are supposed to be killer. Brian Luke, the owner, is a native Hawaiian and brings with him that ethos of Hawaiian cooking with fresh ingredients whenever possible. For today, I got the slow roasted duck gyro, which looks so delicious. It's a slow roasted duck with a pomegranate marinade, which is giving it that really beautiful red flavor. And they stuff it in this warm pita with some cucumber, red onion, avocado, and some Mediterranean slaw. Mmm. Oh yeah, that hits the spot. That pomegranate marinade is nice and tangy, got a little bit of a slightly sour note on the end of it. Kind of reminds me a little of Japanese ume, the pickled plum. And the duck in here is more of a shredded meat, so it's even more tender. That slaw is a great contrast. Nice and fresh and crunchy. And then just to cool the whole thing off, take a huge bite of that creamy avocado. Okay, it's time for the fries. I see there's a dusting of seasoning on this and I tried to ask what they are, but you know, these are award-winning fries and the uh, ingredients are top secret. What I can see, it's got a sprinkling of paprika, some sea salt, and some cilantro on it. Let's give it a try. Mm. Perfectly crispy fried with a nice soft center. And the seasoning isn't too overpowering, just a nice dusting to give it a little bit of flavor. Ditto with a very light hand on the salt. They give you this really fantastic looking aioli. Also super secret recipe, so I can't tell you what's in it. Here we go, taking the fries for a dip. Mmm. I think there's definitely some paprika and cilantro in this as well. This is a super popular local spot, and especially during peak season, gets really busy. So you might want to call ahead to make reservations, especially for these primo outdoor spots. All right, time to head out for my boat cruise. After a full day of fun in the sun, it's time to party. First, we're gonna hit Base Camp Hotel for happy hour. Base Camp is a relatively new hotel motel with a cool hipster RV slash camping adventure theme. One of Base Camp's big objectives was to reproduce that feeling of camaraderie at a hostel. So they've got a lot of huge common public spaces. This lobby area here has fire pits, cornhole, table tennis, and other types of lawn games. There's even a couple of upstairs decks for hanging. And there's also the old Outpost Brewing Company, now south of North, where you can come and grab some home-brewed beer. This brewery just opened at the end of 2018, and they brew much of their own beers, as well as reserving a couple of guest taps for other local breweries. So their new name, South of North, comes from this saying, South of North, East of West, here for now, which epitomizes the Tahoe way of life. Adventurous, nomadic, and living for the moment. So you can get a flight which is six for 12 bucks, or you can get $3 per glass. So I'm gonna start my flight here with the Explorer's Cream Ale, which the first beer that they ever brewed. It's sort of a much creamier, paler ale, but this has got more of like a fruity, rich, vanilla texture and flavor to it. Then I've got here, this one sounds super interesting, horchata stout. So this is a stout 
that's made with hints of cinnamon and milk to it so that you get that Mexican rice corchata drink taste to it. And then I'm gonna finish off with a spice cadet. This one's a winter ale and it's got like all spice and chili in it. So I'll mention these three craft beers are ones that they make in-house. Cheers. Mm, that's a good beer to start with. Nice and smooth and mellow. Kind of eases you in. That's really easy to drink. Out of all the beers, Stout is my favorite. There's something really nice about that rich bitterness. Like, you feel like you're actually drinking something. Again, super mellow, goes down really smoothly. Impromptu concert in the background. All right, I'm starting already to get a buzz, but let's try the Spice Cadet. Oh, that's a much richer, much more bitter stuff. I'm getting this really nice hot tingling sensation on my tongue. Kind of interesting, there's a little bit of kind of a whiskey-esque finish on this beer. Pretty nice. So remember with these flights, you always want to go from the lightest to the darkest. Also from 5 to 10, you can order s'mores kits in the hotel lobby and you can roast them right out here on the fire pit. We're now going to cross the street, which incidentally is also the state border, and hit the casinos on the Nevada side. There are maybe four or five major ones here. They're nothing like the glitzy modern ones that you're gonna find in Vegas. They're probably more like Vegas circa's 1970s with their 6 dollars buffets and cheesy reviews. Despite the quality, cheese is half that fun and you gotta do a buffet when you're here in Nevada. Harris Forest Buffet is one of the longest standing buffets in Lake Tahoe and it's been voted year after year as the best buffet in the region. Pro tip, if you sign up for our player's card at the cashier's, you're gonna get a discount on your meal. The buffet is located on the 18th floor of the casino for amazing views. Make sure you come early so you can score a table right next to the windows. Let's hit the buffet. I'm gonna angle for the seafood. They've got a sushi station, very impressive. Fruits here are kind of standard. These pizzas look super yummy, but no carbs. No carbs. The Creole style fish. Oh yeah, prime rib, look at that. Your salad's over here, starting with a cocktail shrimp. The DIY salad bar here, it's delicious. Oh, the Chinese station. These are probably bao under here, yep. And then you've got all sorts of other goodies. Hot stickers, fried rice, and a sweet and sour soup in there. Usually the Asian offerings at these places are not great, so I'm gonna try that out first. I got two types of chicken. The ubiquitous orange chicken. Not bad, although it's kinda of hard to go wrong with orange chicken. It's a little on the dry side, but at least they didn't over sauce it. And I also got this Chinese style fried chicken, which had giant slices of jalapeno in it, so I think it's supposed to be pretty spicy. Ooh. Surprisingly yummy. The chicken is really tender and the coating is just right. And those jalapenos give it kind of a really nice, very light kick. They have the buffet standby cocktail shrimp. I'll give them points for it being nice and firm. Negative points for the fact that I'm gonna have to peel up myself. Anything that slows down my eating consumption is a big pain in the ass. All right, there we go, ready for the dip. Cocktail sauce, yummy. Thumbs up on the freshness too. Also in the Chinese food section, they had fish. It looks like a sweet and sour. Meh, overcooked. All right, so I think we can skip that the next plate. I've had three plates now, but there's always room for dessert. Look at how huge this dessert bar is. All right guys, I thought I'd do one shot with the restaurant in the background so you can see what it's like for dessert. I got what looks like a cherry pie, a chocolate dipped strawberry, and this looks like a lemon tart. And then, this looks so cool. I think it's a garbage pail dessert, chocolate mousse with little sprinkles of Oreo on top and a gummy worm. I don't have super high hopes for this cherry pie, but let's try it. Wow, I'm really surprised. I thought that was going to be horrible because the filling looked kind of gelatinous. But actually, the cherries in this taste pretty good. 
pretty fresh and pretty real. I got my strawberry, so beautiful. Mm, that strawberry is so ripe and juicy and the chocolate goes so well with it. And this mousse looks interesting. Let's see how it tastes. Meh, standard mousse. Looks prettier than it actually tastes. Damn, my stomach is so bloated. That's gonna do it for me for today. If you want more food recommendations, I've met so many friendly locals along the way who've shared with me their favorites, and I'm gonna include information on those restaurants down in the description box below. I'm gonna hit the slots now. Hopefully I'll have just as good luck with them as I've had with the food here. Luck be a lady tonight. Peace out.